All right, so we're back again, and I got some bad news for Botvinnik in this one. We're going to take a look at uh, the other side of the coin this time, where Botvinnik is facing Sammy Rashevsky. And there's a cool picture if you look up Samuel Rashevsky in Google, because he was one of the first real documented chess prodigies. And one of those cool pictures you can find is where he's probably less than eight years old and he's given a simul to a bunch of adults. So it's a cool picture. Um, but he was very, very talented when he was young and he's playing black against this game in the FIDE World Championship Tournament in 1948. So let's take a look at this. And we get a Nimzo Indian and this is the Rubenstein variation. And Ryshevsky wastes no time here with c5, a3, and we've defined the structure. And the thing to remember about Nimzo Indians is when you trade off a bishop early, your remaining bishop, your goal should be to get the pawns on the opposite color of the bishop to make the bishop stronger. So say if we're able to accomplish getting a pawn on d6, e5, and b6, it's going to optimize that bishop for the future. It isn't necessarily like the plan in all variations, but you don't want to play a move like d5, for instance, unless you have a very good reason for doing so, because it's going to help white trade off his double pawns, and at the same time, it's not going to be abundantly clear if your bad bishop is going to be an effective piece. So across the Nimzo Indians, that's a general theme that you should be aware of. So he plays knight c6, not a bad move, putting pressure on the center. Castles, reasonable. And there's our friend b6, getting ready to develop our bishop. Now, here's a great memory marker. Do we have a dark square bishop? No. So it could be quite problematic for us with this pin if we allow it to happen, right? So if he just plays something like bishop a6 to pressure this pawn, after bishop g5, this doesn't seem appealing, this type of idea, because black's king's going to be wide open in the long term. Make sense? So that's why on this move, as soon as e4 happened, Knight e8 is an excellent move by black that is preventing that idea, and now he has the extra option of f5. Also, we could have ideas like bishop a6 to hit the pawn, knight a5 to hit the pawn, and even this knight could come to d6. And see how everybody can pile up on the double pawn? Anytime you're starting to see peace harmony with ideas, you typically have yourself a very reasonable position. Make sense? If you're not seeing that peace harmony, you want to figure out how to get there. Bishop e3. d6. Tickle, tickle on that double pawn. Now, the knight and bishop are coordinated attacking c4, so white plays queen e2. And I feel like in this game, already we've reached a point to where white did not optimize his development Botvinnik didn't do what he normally... He's not Botvinniking this game. Ryshevsky is Botvinniking Botvinnik. <laughs> As we've seen from the previous two Botvinnik examples. So, Queen d7. And maybe we have this extra idea to go Queen a4. <laughs> See how he's just... He's, he's got himself a little weakness. And he's just needling away at it until it breaks. F4. Now Bob Vinick's got some ideas. He says, okay, I've got pawn weaknesses. I've got some extra space. I'm going to go after you on the king side. Throw the kitchen sink. And this is another one of those great benefits to 98. F5. To prevent white from expanding on the king side. Just solidifying, shoring things up. And here is the point where it shows that Botvinnik got confused in the position. And even the greatest players, I mean, a world champion, can get confused. 
He moves his rook again to another square. E5. And then he moves that rook there. So, you mean to tell me there wasn't a more efficient way to do this? I'm just saying. Even the best players make mistakes, but you got to keep playing the game. DE. Ooh, those, those C pawns look bad forever now. Can't get rid of them. Open file for the rook. Knight's on a better square. Looking at f4. He's got to defend. Getting ready for our queen to potentially come back around. Beautiful square for the lady. Attacking some weaknesses. He defends the weaknesses. Now we mess up the pawns. We fix the pawns so they can't move unless we'll take one for free. Making sure everything's safe. You want to trade? Because black's king's better. Black has no weaknesses. White's trying to make a draw here and hold on. Coming back to attack the C-pawn. Now how are we going to break through? Double on the D-file. Rook C7. He got tired of waiting, so he sacrifices a pawn. He's like, I don't even want it. Rook C D7. H4. Where's your rook going? He decides to sack a piece. So he's not losing material. Well, he's losing material, but this seemed like the better way to attempt to do it. Trading is a loss. And Botvinnik resigned after King E2, or he ran out of time. I am not quite sure. But... Overall, are we starting to see, like, some games that I'm showing you guys have these brilliant and beautiful tactical combinations in them, and then the other games are a lot more like modern games where we're just seeing clean, straightforward play where one side understands the plans and is doing all the right stuff. You got a question? Yeah. Uh-huh. Why I'm not sure. Maybe it was an extra mood added in the game, but... Like, continuing with this type of endgame, I would expect to see something like rook takes and then king f5. And the point is that the only way white could ever have any threats or to beat us is to push these pawns. And let's, let's say if he played something like g4 and we get this, this is how quickly white's position turns to doo-doo because of the extra bishop. I just go here. Now, can his king go anywhere to continue to protect this pawn? And then if this pawn tries to run, this is how strong our bishop is. It's like, you're not going anywhere. And I'm not even worried about that guy. I'm going to make it to where now I'm going to box you out and win your other pawn. And see how I'm just bullying him with the extra piece? That's the type of technique you use to uh, win these types of positions. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sure. That's that.